Thank you very much, Pablo. So it's, um, it's a great honor to be, uh, to be invited back again this year um, for this meeting. Um, so I do think I have a, a particular aptitude to give, uh, to give this particular talk. I've been a consultant or an attending in uh, independent practice now for the best part of 15 years. Um, and I think I've seen enough talented young surgeons come through now to know that my own surgical skills reside squarely in the, uh, in the below average sector. And I think that's probably um, partly explains why I struggled rather uh, as a fellow and a, uh, and a young consultant with the uh, medial approach. I found it difficult for a, a number of reasons. I think it's stressful because it involves operating around those critically important medial circumflex vessels uh, at the bottom of, a, of an increasingly uh, deep and dark hole. Um, and different people describe different ways of getting to the uh, of getting to the hip for remedial approach. Uh, once you get there, uh, uh, different people say different things about what you can uh, 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 what you can do. Whether you should just uh, uh, restrict yourself to a stenotomy, whether it's safe to open the capsule, and if you do, whether you should go ahead and do uh, a ligamentum teres tenodesis to aid with uh, reducing that all important hip abduction angle in cast. Um, so it's difficult, but I have persisted nonetheless because of the prize potentially of getting direct access to all those blocks to reduction through a small, very cosmetic uh, groin incision done as a day case procedure with little or no blood loss. So whilst on, uh, on fellowship in uh, Toronto, I made probably one of my greatest uh, leaps forward in terms, of, in terms of understanding the anatomy. When I went to the Toronto Science Centre, uh, Gunther von Hagen was uh, uh, showing his platinated bodies there. I went there with my young family and I must say I rather irritated them because I spent quite a long time gazing at the, uh, the groin pro sections. Um, and that enabled me better to understand the three-dimensional anatomy of the groin. Um, and so if we, if we look at that, um, the, the approach with the red arrow here that takes us directly uh, over pectineus does take us directly down onto the hip joint. But that scares me a, a little um, because we, we're then, uh, we're then uh, retracting directly against the neurovascular bundle. So for those of a more, uh, a more swashbuckling in nature, that's probably fine. For me, I'm, I'm more comfortable going between pectineus and adductor brevis. So there's at least, at least one muscle between me uh, and that all important neurovascular bundle. But that only works if you're aware that the hip joint itself is then more medial and superior. And when you're taking your residence through this approach, you must always be retracting in that direction. Now, as luck would have it, nature uh, kindly uh, positioned the anterior division of the, of the obturator nerve uh, very conveniently in the interval between adductor brevis and pectineus. So it sits there almost like a south cardinal mark directing us in the direction of the lesser trochanter for the psoas release. Um, and if I may just pos uh, push that analogy possibly a little bit too far, um, on a foggy day, if you're struggling to see those nerve fibres, which will often um, have split into, into separate smaller fibres by the time they, they, uh, they've made their way through the interval, if you incise the, the film-like fascia that sits over pectineus and then, and then push that away uh, with a pledge or a sponge, uh, then matters will become clearer. So another tip from me would be that um, in order to get properly into the, into the second layer where we'll find pectineus and adductor brevis, you need to take the full thickness of adductor longus. Now the tendon of adductor longus is relatively short. Um, so so uh, if you come as medially as possible uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with, the, with your incision of adductor longus, you're most likely to get the full thickness of it. When it comes then to finding the lesser trochanter for the psoas release at the end of the interval, um, you'll feel it before you see it, um, and that can be aided with the hip flex and abducted by rolling the femur uh, underneath your, your thumb and, and, uh, and feeling it. There's a, a wadge of fatty tissue that sits on top of the psoas tendon, which prevents you from initially being able to see it. So those are my tips for, uh, for people taking it on, which unfortunately only uh, uh, leaves me a few minutes to talk about the indications, which I think are probably uh, the most important part. So there should be a polling question coming up now. Um, as that, as that works, the polling question really is, is to ask you all um, how many people are still using the medial approach, whether I'm one of the last people standing in that regard. Uh, and for those that do, do you just use it for a SOAS release and avoid the, the capsule and the vessels? Um, or would you, do you proceed uh, uh, to do capsulotomy as well as SOAS release? I'll give you a few, uh, a few minutes just to do that. I don't know whether that polling question is coming up for you. I must say, I, I can't see it on my screen. Um, so I can share the results with you, Simon, if you want to. Most people are responding 
Um, about 50% avoid using the medial approach. A quarter use the medial approach, but only for the psoas release. And another quarter of the people who have responded use it for capsulotomy as well. So that's interesting. Thank you, Pablo. So, um, so I'll tell you what I, uh, what I use it for. We have looked at our um, uh, uh, results. So when I uh, took up consultant practice, uh, I prospectively uh, kept a record of my medial open approaches and I compared them with a colleague uh, who was doing, uh, uh, who was uh, waiting for the appearance of the ossific nucleus and then doing a delayed an anterolateral approach. Um, and the results are comparable in terms of uh, uh, proximal femoral growth disturbance. So long as you avoid the golden rule that you must not uh, abduct the hips in the medial open approach group in the hip spike more than 60 degrees, that's a, a, sure, a, a surefire method after a medial open approach for femoral head osteonecrosis, proximal femoral growth disturbance. Uh, I agree with uh, with Harry Kim and others um, uh, who found that you, you seem to get a better quality uh, uh, longer term result with a lower rate of secondary surgery after the age of 12 months if you do an anterior open approach in capsulography. Uh, and so that's that's what I do. Uh, I reserve uh, reserve a medial uh, open approach for children up to the age of 12 months. After that, I would do an anterior open approach. Um, the second rule for me is uh, I very much agree with the findings of, uh, of Dr. Wedge and Dr. Gardner uh, that the vast majority of children that fail closed reduction will then reduce with a psoas tenotomy. That seems to be the key step in about 90%. Um, and when we've looked again at our series, we found that the um, proximal femoral growth disturbance rate after a, a, cl a, a closed reduction and then medial approach for uh, psoas tenotomy uh, is the same as for closed reduction alone. That rate then almost doubles if you do a capsulotomy. So if you possibly can avoid doing a capsulotomy, which I think you can in the vast majority, uh, just do the the, uh, uh, the psoas tenotomy. And so it's interesting to see that half of those people uh, in the group that are still using the medial approach would, would uh, 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 mostly confine it to a, 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 a psoas tenotomy. Uh, so uh, that's my second rule. Uh, and then my third rule uh, is to follow the, these children very closely for, for residual dysplasia. Um, they, there is a marginally higher rate when we compared our medial open approach with the anterior open approach in capsulography. Uh, there is a marginally higher rate of secondary surgery required for these children. And I very much agree with uh, uh, one of the earlier speakers who said that if you don't pick up the relatively high rate of, of secondary type 2 AV, uh, type 2 proximal femoral growth disturbance. If you let them get to subluxation, then the outcome is uniformly poor. So watch them closely uh, and, uh, and intervene early. Thank you very much.